Our pastor preached to us a few weeks ago, I believe it was the first Sunday of the month. He told us it was time for us to roll up our sleeves. I don't know about you all, but it's time to get to work. Our national bishop, our international bishop, the presiding bishop's theme on this year, it's time to get to work. I believe I'm paraphrasing, but it's time to get to work. Too many people of God who know what to do and how to get to God are not where they need to be. Amen, amen. So I'm gonna to talk to us this morning about staying connected and getting to work. I want to start out, I know Sister Harvey read the theme scripture, but I want to start out with the book of Judges, the fourth chapter, verses four through nine. I want to talk to us a little bit about Deborah. Some people say Deborah, some people say Deborah. I have a sister who has the same spelling of her name, and we call her Deborah. Thank God for her on this morning. She's in the house with my mother. Amen. We thank God for them on today. I would just like to say that uh, the scripture says in the fourth chapter of Judges, starting with verse four, now at that time, Deborah, or Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, was judging Israel. What was she doing? She wasn't sitting on the sidelines. She wasn't trying to figure out what she's supposed to do. She was doing the work. She was judging Israel. That was not a small task. Israel was a large nation. Remember how many had to cross the Red Sea? How many of them folks went on across? She was judging Israel at this time. And she used, used, and she used to sit under the palm tree of Deborah. She had a, a tree named by, uh, under her name, right? She had a tree named, I mean, she was named by, you know, the same as a tree, between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. And the Israelites went up to her for judgment. She sent and called for Barak, son of Abinoam, from Kadesh Naphtali, and said to him, Has not Yahweh, the God of Israel, commanded you? Go, march to Mount Tabor, and take 10,000 men from the descendants of Naphtali and Zebulun. I will draw out Sisera the commander of Jabin's army with his chariots and troops to the wadi of Kishon, and I will give him into your hand. Barak said to her, if you go with me, I will go. But if you do not go with me, I will not go. She said, okay, women of God, sh t talk to me right here. She said what? She said, surely. I know I'm, I'm reading a different version, so I'll just go ahead and read it, but she said, surely I will go with you. She wasn't reluctant. She wasn't scared. She didn't really even ponder it. It says, surely I will go with you. However, there will be no glory for you in the path you are taking. So in other words, God's gonna get the glory. God's gonna get the glory. We're not really caring about who gets the credit, right, as long as God gets the glory. That's what this thing is about. When we go to work for God, we know that he's going to get the glory. That's really what we have to focus on, him getting the glory out of our lives. So when we say, I'll go, doesn't matter who recognizes you, but he has to get the glory. I'll give you, you all know I like to have um, personal, you know, testimonies and things. This, this week has been a very rough week for us. We started out with, well, a couple of weeks. It's been really rough. You know, you, we talked about opening the apartment complex. We were celebrated all of, and we were doing what we needed to do. And then the week of MLK, we had people setting fires, you know, on the property, just, just being disruptive, just trying to be a distraction, right? So on this week, we had somebody on Friday night, I believe, uh, broke into one of the units and, you know, just completely just, just destroyed it, just destroyed it, and then flooded it out and, you know, just tore it up. But you know what? God's going to get the glory. It doesn't matter what it looks like. God's going to get the glory because he's already, you know, he's already given us the victory, right? So I'm going to ask on today, I want you all to ponder in your minds about the different women and men of God in the Bible and their roles and you know what they allowed God to, how God, they allowed God to use them. We need some Deborahs in this time. 
who know their place, who know who's not afraid to prophesy when they have to prophesy, who's not afraid to give people, uh, the, tell people the, right, the difference between right and wrong. We have to be able to step up and step out. I declare on today, I believe God has called me to be a Deborah on today. Do I have the gift of prophecy? No, but he said in the last days, he was going to pour out his spirit on all flesh and his sons and daughters would prophesy, right? So I may not be the prophetess that they're calling for all over the country, but I can prophesy to where I speak life into the people of God. I can prophesy and let you know what thus said the Lord according to the word of God and what he has spoken. No different than the Deborah in this other time, in this other time, right? And what we're reading about in the biblical times. We have got to have some we, you know, I know we've got some Queen Esthers already because we, we, we got that down. We know how to dress. We know how to look. We know how to smell good because, you know, Esther had to go through a process. And there's nothing wrong with going through that process, right? But I just want to make sure whatever process we're going through, we give God the glory. We allow him to get the glory out of it. Doesn't matter how good we look and how, how bad we look, but we want God to get the glory out of it, right? We, have, we need some Esthers. We need some Ruths. We need some other women and men of God who are going to say, you know, I'm going to, if Ruth told, if, I'm not Ruth, I'm sorry, Queen Esther said, if I perish, let me perish, right? So some of us may have to lay down our lives in order to save our families. That was Queen Esther's role, right? Don't just let them go. Just say, you know what, I'm going to stay before God until he gives, brings complete deliverance in this household. And they may not even be living with us anymore, but I'm not going to let them go because God has connected them to me. Amen? It's time to do some warfare praying. We don't just let the enemy just have his way. I laughed on yesterday. Now, did I get angry about some of the stuff that I saw that, in the apartment? I said, but that can be replaced. But God is in control of everything. He showed us on a few weeks ago that, guess what? You just can't do everything you want to do. But he wants us to rise up, saints. He wants us to be connected to him. That's about abiding in the vine, and I'll get to that scripture. But he also wants us to get to work. Too many of us are sitting on the sidelines. We're gifted. God has given us the wisdom. Deborah had wisdom. She wasn't, she, she wasn't just doing something just to be doing something. Those people were not coming to her just because or oh, just because the wisdom that she had, the lessons that she's learned, she wasn't still trying to learn them. She had learned them because she was able to impart wisdom to the others. We have to, those lessons that God take us through instead of us crying about everything, give God the glory. As a, as a woman of faith, as a woman of God, as a wife and a mother, I have to understand that, you know what? The things that God has allowed me to go to, they're there to help somebody else. They're not just for me, and I, they're not for me to sit around and complain. My, my role is to say, you know what, God, what do you want me to do with this? Moses had something in his hand. God spoke to him and said, what is that that you have in your hand? He said, I, I, I got a rod. Well, stretch it out. And even when things looked a little distracting, even when things looked a little bit off, when the, the other, 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 other folks was throwing the, the wizards and the folks was throwing their rods down and they was turning into snakes. Listen, Moses didn't back down. When he laid it down, God said, now his conquered the other folks who were there, right? So that's the confidence that we have to have in God. We're not getting all of this teaching to just stand back and, you know, and woe is me and all of that. No, it, when you're connected to God, he said, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So we walk in the greatness of God. We walk in the greatness of God. You don't have to hold your head down and you don't have to look sad. I was in a meeting this week with the city council woman and I've been working in this area for, since 2015. And this is what I'm saying. You don't have to worry about when people don't recognize you. It didn't even, you know what? It's like, what did they say? Water on a, a duck's back or oil on a, a duck's back or something like that. It's just going to roll on off. Went into the office. I had just spoken to someone who, was, who works in the city manager's office, a pretty high up position. And I was um, speaking to the councilwoman and she's fairly new in this area, not too new. I've known her since she got in or prior to her getting in. 
And you know, she reached her hand out to me to introduce herself, and I introduced myself again. I said, I, you know, we've met. And so then she looked at me a little strangely, and the, you know, I uh, don't really know who Rehoboth is. And I was like, oh, okay, you work in this area, and you don't know who Rehoboth is. All you have to do is drive down 27th Avenue, and you'll know who Rehoboth is, right? So I was having a conversation, and Ms. Maya was um, giving her some backdrop of what she wanted to do. And as I was listening, I said, it's funny how the enemy will try and distract you if you let him. I said, I know who I am and I know whose I am. So guess what? What you're talking about doesn't mean anything because whatever God says is gonna happen, it's, that's what's gonna happen. And when I thought about it, I gave him, I said, God, you have given us this great task. He's given us a great task over here and it's time to get busy with it. You know, it's not just about First Lady doing what she does. You all are an army for God. I was looking at Pastor Rivas and his church across the street from us yesterday. They got busy, y'all. They went to work. They set their tables up, they put their signs up, and they said, free coffee and free donuts. And then they said, we're going to pray for these people who are walking the streets the way they're walking them. He said, we're going to pray that they receive Christ. I said, and when we need, as we're hoping, we right across the street, we need to ban our forces with them. We need to be out there saying, let's pray for these people. These folks need deliverance. We're talking about the prostitutes walking. Guess what? God needs to save them too. And we know that some of us were saved out of some things, right? We may not have been prostituting, but we were just, we, we might have been close to it. I don't know your business, but I'm just saying. We've got to be careful how we judge people. We have to understand, you know what, they have a soul. That's somebody's daughter. That's somebody's son out there on the drugs. So we have to pray that God will deliver. Why did he put us in this area if it wasn't for us to get to work? Why did he put us in this area? That's what we need to ask ourselves. What are we doing? So many of us wonder, well, oh, God, I don't know what my purpose. What have you... What has he put in you? What are you passionate about? What do you love to do? Deborah was working, that's why she had another monumental task. The things that you have already in your arsenal is what you will use, amen? It, you don't have to go and try to find something new. God already has that figured out. He's already put it in you. If you can teach and educate, teach that next young one so that they will know. If you can just give words of encouragement, stop by and talk to some folks who may, may need to be encouraged. You may not be able to get behind the pulpit, but whatever your pulpit is, it's time to get to work. It's time to do that. Amen? So there are three things. God gives us power. God, I'm sorry. Oh, then he works in us both the will and to do for his good pleasure. And then we're going to speak about what's, what do you have in your hand? So we talked about Deborah and God giving us power. So in the book of Acts 1 and 8, and this is the, the Passion Translation version. It says, but I promise you this. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and you will be seized with power. You will be my messengers to Jerusalem, throughout Judea, the distant provinces, even to the remotest places of the earth. So what's our, what's our number one purpose, according to this scripture? He said to be witnesses. Who have you talked to lately about the goodness of God? We talk, to every, we talk to people about everything. Who have we talked to lately about the goodness of God? I'm not talking about Facebook prophesying and preaching and things like that. I'm talking about some one-on-one -on -one stuff. You know, you come in contact with people every single day who need the Lord. We say we have this great God. Who have we shared that with? If he's commissioned, if he gave us the Holy Ghost. Now, we know we enjoy dancing and speaking in tongues and glorifying God. But he said he gave us, the, he empowered us to be witnesses. That's really what he gave, it, gave us the Spirit of God for, to be witnesses. That the Spirit of God empowers us to be witnesses. Amen? So, 
Too many of us are caught up in waiting for God to tell us what our purpose is. The scripture is clear what our purpose is. We are to be witnesses. That's number one. The rest of it will come. Anything else is gravy, but you have to be a witness for Christ. Amen? So the scripture tells us we are not ashamed, what? Of the gospel. Not of whatever we done made up. Just stay with the word. Stay with the book. You stay with the book, you don't have any trouble. When you don't stay with the book, that's when you get in trouble because you got a bunch of people who know the book and they gonna quote it better than you. But if you stay with the book and witness to them about the goodness of God and how he's brought you out, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, he'll confirm it. Amen? Paul said, and I'm paraphrasing, Paul said, I plant Apollo's water. It's God that gives the increase. So what that's saying to me is they may not get saved because I talk to them. Somebody else may have to come and, 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 and sprinkle a little water on them, right? Because I done planted the seed, right? I can plant the seed. Somebody else is going to water, but it's God who's going to get the glory. It's God who's going to get the glory. And that's what's important to me on today. Doesn't matter if I speak a kind word to somebody, if I tell them, you know what? The Lord is, is, is faithful. I don't care what it looks like. Hold on. He's coming to, to, to do some things for you. Just believe that. Why do I know that? Because he did it for me. He made a way out of no way. Does anybody have that testimony? That he made a way out of no way. When I didn't think, couldn't see myself clear, could not see things clearly, he made a way for me. That's, that's, that's a simple testimony. When things look dark, he made a way. When he's making a way, give God the glory. Don't hold your head down and trust God. He's faithful, saints. I don't care what it looks like, how bad it looks, God is faithful. And he expects us to be faithful. He works in us both the will and to do for what? His good pleasure. He's, it don't, it's not about us. We've already heard that lesson over and over again. It's for his glory for his good pleasure. So how does that look? God will continually revitalize you implanting within you the passion to do what pleases him. So when you start getting those thoughts or those feelings like things are stirring up inside of you, you say, God, you know what? All of a sudden I feel this burst of energy. I feel this burst of creativity. I just want to go and do this and I want to do that. God is working in you both the will and to do for his good pleasure. Now, as long as you know that it lines up with the word of God, I'm not talking about crazy stuff. God told me to go do this and you know good and well it's about as far as from God as the east is from the west. Let's, 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 let's make sure we solidify it with the word of God. But when it's the word of God, the power of God will back you. The power of the Holy Ghost will back you, even when it doesn't look like it. I told a sister on this week, don't worry about what other people say. I'm like Bishop King. He used to always say, what do they say? Let them say what they say. You don't have to worry about what other people say when you have God. When God is on your side, you give the case over to him and let's work, let him work it out. Because I believe that the old song used to say, Jesus can't work it out if you let him. Jesus can't work it out, right? That problem that I had, I just couldn't seem to solve. What? I tried and I tried, but I, what? I just kept getting deeper involved, right? That, I turned it over to Jesus. And I stopped worrying about it. That's the key. Stop worrying about it and turn it over to the Lord because he'll work it out. As the, the preacher said, he's concerned about what we're concerned about. How does that work? Because he already put it in you. The things that you become concerned about, he's already working in you both the will and to do for his good pleasure. He's working it out in you. He's just trying to increase your faith. When things come your way, they're going to come your way. Nobody told you it's going to be easy. The road's not going to be easy. But guess what? His burden is light if we, if we give it to him. His burden is light. So as we move forward, how does this, I, I told you how it works. We're going to st read, study, and pray, and stay connected to God. 
He'll birth out of us a desire to do more, to help others more, to love more, if we are connected to him. Now, if you're not connected to the vine, then let's read that scripture just so that we can just really um, just bring it out. This is the Passion Translation. It says, I am a true sprouting vine, and the farmer who tends the vine is my father. He cares for the branches connected to me by lifting and propping up the fruitless branches and pruning every fruitful branch to yield a greater harvest. So he will prune us. So when you start feeling the pain, there are pain, there's sometimes painful things that you go through. When you start feeling the pain, let him prune you. You have to cut back fruit trees in order for them to bear more fruit. When the, when the leaves get, when the branches get heavy and weighted down, they're not as sweet and productive. So when you get pruned, you get a little sweeter. You know why? Because you know how other people might feel going through something. You can have some compassion and some empathy because guess what? Ooh, I sure don't wish that on anybody because I know what it feels like when people are talking crazy about me. I really know how it feels like when, what it feels like when people are talking crazy about my husband. I've been through that, so I make it my point not to get on Facebook and any other book and talk about other people's husbands because it doesn't feel good to them or their families. So we have to show that compassion to other people. We cannot allow the enemy to distract us. There's so many distractions. As soon as you see something about a big name person who's in ministry, people jump on the bandwagon. Be careful. You never know where you're going to land. Some of y'all say, I know, I ain't gonna ever. You never know where you're going to land. Clamp it down. Don't be so quick to get on everybody's bandwagon. Child, I know he wasn't right. You don't know any, you don't even know the person. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Pray for them. If the Bible tells us to pray for those who despitefully use you, what should you do for those who are in the household of faith? We pray for them. We pray for one another. The words I have spoken over you have already cleansed you, so you must remain in life union with me. I, for I remain in life union with you. This is Jesus talking. For as a branch severed from the vine will not bear fruit. For everybody who thinks you can do this by yourself is not going to work. You cannot cut off a branch from a tree and expect for it to grow. It's not going to be productive. I don't care how you stick it in the ground by itself, it doesn't work. It's going to die. I am the sprouting vine and you're, you're my branches. As you live in union with me as your source, fruitfulness will stream from within you. I'm gonna repeat that. As you live in union with me, God, as you stay with God, I don't care what it looks like. I don't, and we say, as the, the word said, I think Bishop um, Campbell said, Willie Campbell said years ago, I don't care who's shaking, I don't care who's rocking and who's rolling and think they're getting over. You do what's right. Stay with God. This is the year to stay connected. For those of you who are trying to do it out there on your own, I'm telling you, this is the year to be connected. If you are never connected, we don't know what's coming in this 2024 election cycle. You already see the crazies coming out. The crazier than crazy is coming out but we cannot be soon shaken. We have to be rooted and grounded in the Lord. If we're not rooted and grounded in him, we can be, we're gonna be cast into the, the fire. He said, as you live in union with me as your source, fruitfulness will, be, will stream from within you, but when you live separated from me, you are powerless. People don't, they wonder what's going on. How come God ain't answering my prayers? Maybe you ought to check your power source. Are you really plugged in? Maybe you should check your power source and everything is not, everything ain't the devil. 
Some things are just we're not doing our part. We have a part, God has a part. When we do our part, he's not, there's no shortage of power for him. There's no shortage. Just know that. God is able to deliver us. For as a branch severed from the vine will not bear fruit, so your life will be fruitless unless you live in your life intimately joined to me, to mine. I am the sprouting vine and you're my branches. As you live in union with me as your source, fruitfulness will stream from within you. But when you live separated from me, you are powerless. If a person is separated from me, he is discarded. Such branches are gathered up and thrown into the fire to be burned. But if you live in union with me, if my words live powerfully within you, this is why we emphasize get in the word, come to Bible study. You don't even have to leave your home now. You just get online and go to Bible study. What's really your excuse? It's really, we, we really don't have any excuses. And then we have all of this information available to us. We can get the word of God. We have the, our services are, are not streamed, but they're, re, they're, they're placed on YouTube every Tuesday. So even if you miss a service, you don't have to miss the message. Get the word of God in you because the word is what's going to sustain you. He will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on the Lord. You cannot do this on your own. But if you live in union, um, I'm sorry, I may be rereading it, but I'm just going to um, read it just because I need to make sure that you, we, I don't miss something. But if you live in union with me, and if my words live powerfully within you, then you can ask whatever you desire, and it will be done. Isn't that something? You can ask whatever you desire. You can ask. Whatever you desire. Because guess what? Your desires are now the, in, in alignment with God's desires. So they're not going to be out of, a, out of line, right? You can ask. But guess what? When you so focused on self and not focused on the things of God, you're going to be distracted and all off balanced all of the time. God is not calling us to be off balanced. God is calling us to be balanced in him. When your lives bear abundant fruit, you demonstrate that you are my mature disciples who glorify my Father. He's just looking for us to grow up, saints. We can't keep going around the mulberry bush. Some of us are too old to be trying to go and jump on that merry-go-round. Some of us too old. You know, it, you know we got knots and bruises when we were young. Why are you trying to go back to that? It's time to grow up. Amen? Amen. So as we go forth in God, we have to understand God has placed in us the desire, the will to do for his good pleasure. So now it's time to see what, check, check, what, what, what has he, he blessed you with? What can you do? Even if you can't, you know, run a marathon, maybe you can call and encourage some people. Maybe you can say to some folks, you know what, there's a better way. There is a better way. We have, so we, this, is, this is unprecedented for our area. Now the prostitution has been bad for a, a minute. But all of a sudden, since Rehoboth Place fence has gone, come down and things are happening, I tell you the prostitutes are coming out of the woodworks. And they're standing on the corners. They st I, I believe they're standing in front of Rehoboth Place to get a good, you know, for them to, to check them out, check me out, you know. I'm looking good right here. Y'all come check me out. That's just my opinion. I don't, I got, but you know what? The other day I said, you know what? I'm going to get me some little, some tracks or some booklets. I'm going to go out there and talk to them. It's time for the work to be done. I said, listen, daughter, there's more for you to do now. She may run the other way, but guess what? I'm going to plant the seed. So if there's anybody else who feel like praying and joining me, we, we're not waiting for opportunities to preach in this pulpit. There's, there's enough to be done out there. There's work to be done out there. You, I, that's, I, I look at that and I, I pray as I'm going to, I say, Lord, that's somebody's daughter. I don't know where she's from and what she's trying to do, but I do know that she's a working girl right now, but God's got a work for her to do. So I'm going to commit to saying, you know what, and when I go out there the next time, I'm going to go and say, hey, sis, hey, baby, hey, sister, 
you know what, God's got a better way. Can I tell you about a better way? I don't really know what's going on. We've got some services, so I've got some folks who actually work with people like that. Now, I don't know the ins and outs of how to work with folks like that, so we've got some community partners who know how to work with them. I'm just gonna plant the seed and hand them off if they accept it. Because the alternative is for them to get arrested and have to spend, you know, and, and keep doing what they, going through the little circle. But I'm gonna talk to them and say, you know what, there's a better way. So if anybody wanna link up with First Lady, I'm ready. I'm seriously ready. I'm looking at this, I said, God, these women are, they're, they must be hurting. They must be in need because they're out here every, I mean, some of them, uh, the, the, our regional property manager said, uh, I see we got three regulars. <laughs> She, she said, we got three regulars. I said, all right, three regulars. We're about, we about to find out who these regulars' names are. We're about to see who they belong to. Hey, hey dog, some, something's going on here. We need to get you off these streets. It's dangerous out here, sleeping with every man. I mean, because literally, when I was leaving um, the apartment complex on Friday, there was a line of vehicles, and the one was standing. She was coming by. She came by my vehicle. I, How you doing? She was like. No, I don't want you, but how you doing? <laughs> you know, we've got to understand what is, what is working in this situation? What is God saying about this situation? Do we just turn the blind eye and just come on, you know, pass them by and let them just be? No, I believe God put us in that community for a reason. I'm not saying for the brothers to go out there because they may be trying to hook you. I'm talking to the sisters today, amen? Yeah. <laughs> I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm not calling the brothers out there right now. I might call y'all for backup if some of them other folk, you know, try to, try to say something to me, but I ain't calling for the backup. The reason I'm saying this is because we do need the brothers, but some things we don't, you know, we need some folks with some street smarts. We need, we need some folks with some wisdom. See, we're not a country club church. Don't y'all notice we don't have all of the higher accolades and folks going on, not to say there's anything wrong with, God put us in the hood for a reason. And some of y'all came out of the hood, some of y'all still in the hood, right? I know some of y'all youngins don't know nothing about the hood. Because I was talking to one of the brothers the other day, and he was telling, I was telling about something that was happening with the folks and how they was talking crazy with us and stuff. He said, you know what I would do? He said, I would, I would put my hoodie on, I'd go down the street, and I'd spray them with some mace and dare them to say something. <laughs> we got some hood folks, right? What's that you got in your hands? Now understand, I'm not telling y'all, I said the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. <laughs> They're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So I'm not telling y'all, although we need some Peters in the bunch, I'm not telling y'all to go cut off somebody's ear. <laughs> I'm telling y'all to pull down the strongholds because we've got to be mighty in God, right? Amen? We got to pull them down. It's time to pull down the strongholds. There's no reason for us to, you know, draw, allow stuff to happen in our um, community where God is saying, you know, there's more to it, right? So let's look at what we have in our hands. Some of us are multi-talented. Some of us can only do one thing, and God recognizes that. Remember the parable of the talents? He gave one uh, one person, one talent, another person, three, another t five or ten or something. Like they multiplied them, right? The one who only had one buried it in the ground. Understand, you cannot bury whatever you have. You can't bury it in the ground. Let God use you at your level. Let him use you at your level. Whatever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord. Don't sit on your gift or bury it in the ground because you're fearful. The Lord will perfect the gift in you once you step out and use it for his glory. It, be, it will begin to develop and grow. Some of us are waiting on God. No, he's waiting on you. He's waiting on you. He's not, you're not waiting on God. God already put it in you. He said he gave every man a measure of faith. Every person, every one of us have a measure of faith. So we're not waiting on God to do anything. At, look and see, God, what did you give me that I can do well? 
If people are attracted to you, quit complaining. Well, I don't know why people are always calling and asking me questions. Use the wisdom God gave you. Maybe because you have, a, don't start gossiping with them, child. You know, I know what you're saying. No. Use the wisdom he gave you. And if you can't think of any wisdom, say, God, now give me wisdom in this moment. Or just sometimes just sit and listen. Sometimes you can just sit and listen. And when they go, go, go left or they go, go in the wrong direction, you say, no, baby, that ain't it. That's not it. Let's not do it like that. So staying in the, we're going to finish up with this last scripture, St. John 15, 1 through 8, those verses. Staying connected helps us to produce and be fruitful. I am a true sprouting vine, and the farmer who tends the vine is my father. He cares for the branches connected to me by lifting and propping up the fruitless branches and pruning every fruitful branch to yield a greater harvest. The words I have spoken over you have already cleansed you. So everything you've been taught have already planted a seed of cleansing within you. That's what the Holy Spirit does, the washing of the word. That's what it does. So you must remain in life union with me. And, you know, we read it earlier in a different version, but I just want to make sure we get the gist of it. For I remain in life union with you. For as a branch severed from the vine will not bear fruit, will not bear fruit, so your life will be fruitless unless you live your life intimately joined to me. Draw closer to God, saints. He said, draw closer to me and I'll draw nigh unto me and I'll draw nigh to you. Stop finding excuses not to pray. Stop finding reasons not to be in the Bible studies. Stop finding reasons not to connect with your sister. In fact, find reasons to connect with the saints of God. It will help you in the long run. As long as you hang out in the fringes, you won't grow. You won't get what you say that you desire. You say that you want more of God. I think we did a survey or some pastor was asking on the, um, something on the Bible study the other night and most of the people said, I want more of God. I want this, I want that. Well, it, to get more of God, you've got to get more into his word. Thank you, Brother Preacher. He said, you gotta get more of God, you gotta show up. All right. Amen. Uh, I'm gonna take it a little further. You gotta do more than show up, you gotta plug in to the power source. Amen. It doesn't do us any good to hear word after word after word and we don't take it in and do what we need to do. Am I saying that everybody is off, off track? No. I just challenge those of us who can do better, to do better. And for those who are doing better, do more better. I don't even know if that's a proper vernacular, but y'all know what I'm saying, right? Do better, do better. We, have, we can do better. There's room for improvement, amen? There's room for improvement. As we come together, I'm saying to the young as well as the seasoned, we have work to do. Amen? Let's get to work. God bless you.